Spina bifida, it is the most common of the major congenital abnormality and when this occurs there is developmental defect in the vertebral column resulting in incomplete fusion of the vertebral arch and this incomplete fusion of the vertebral arch so this occurs early in the embryonic life so this may be associated with other deformities such as telepes equinovirus now let us understand this diagram that this is the superior view of the vertebra and this is the lateral view so as you can see that the vertebra is complete and in the sagittal view also or the lateral view also we can all appreciate all the parts of the vertebra but here in this case you can see that there is defective fusion of this vertebral arch so there is defective fusion as you can appreciate in the superior view but in the lateral view you can see that we cannot appreciate the portion the same as here that is the posterior elements of the vertebral canal or vertebra it is not observed here let us understand about the types of spina bifida that there are main two types first is spina bifida occulta and second is spina bifida cystica let us understand about the first type that is spina bifida occulta as you can see that spina bifida occulta which is the mildest form and the defect in the fusion of the laminal arch so as you can see that here there is a defect in the fusion of the laminal arch actually if we see the normal vertebra then we can see the lamina and the fusion of lamina that is in the posterior direction but here in case of occulta there is defective fusion and which is evident on x-ray so on x-ray you can clearly identify this abnormality third is the indentation now what is the reason behind the indentation actually this indentation which we see whenever we are assessing the patient and we write it when we are taking the on observation that is on observation we can see that there is indentation or i can say the pit over the site of the lesion so the reason behind the spit is that that whenever we see such kind of indentation that is because of the fibrous band which are there between the bone and the skin so this fibrous band will pull the skin in the anterior direction or i can say towards the vertebral body so we can see a indentation or kind of a pit kind of thing whenever we are assessing the patient next thing is the neurological symptoms so neurological symptoms they it usually does not seen in the childhood but the symptoms may appear as the growth occurs so as the child grows up the neurological symptoms may start appearing and which is most commonly seen in the adolescent also but during childhood the neurological symptoms are very rare next thing is the enuresis or the urine retention may be seen in case of the spina bifida occulta the commonest site for the spina bifida occulta that is lumbosacral region and in that the first sacral vertebra is all the most common site next thing is the spinal cord and the meninges right the structures in the vertebral canal that is spinal cord and meninges they are undamaged they are completely intact right and the tuft of hair over that site which can be seen and the last one that is a tail tail sign which is also seen in case of the spina bifida occulta let us understand about the spina bifida cystica so in the case of spina bifida cystica there are two subtypes first is meningocele and the second one that is myelomeningocele so first we will understand what is meningocele so in this first diagram as you can see that the meninges they have protruded out so in case of meningocele the co most common that is arch is not fused and the sac protrudes posteriorly but without containing the spinal cord spinal cord remains at its place but the meninges they have protruded outside or i can say posteriorly next thing is it contains the csf also and there is no signs of the neurological abnormality spinal cord is completely normal but the meninges and it contains the cerebrospinal fluid both of 
then they have protruded out or I can say posteriorly. Now we will focus on the meningomyelocele. Let us focus on the myelomeningocele which is the second type of sp spina bifida cystica. Now myelomeningocele which is the most severe form of spina bifida cystica inevitably there is neurological damage as you can see in this diagram that along with the meninges and the cerebrospinal fluid spinal cord has also protruded out so the protruding sac contains not only the meninges and the cerebrospinal fluid but it also contains the spinal cord now let us focus on some of the features that first is a fragile skin that the overlying skin which may be fragile or sometimes it may only be covered by the arachnoid matter and if it is broken then there is high chances of the infection to this structures and there can be muscle paralysis and the weakness so muscle paralysis or the muscle weakness which actually depends on the level of defect right so all the time it is not necessary that the patient may complain the same muscle weakness but here it depends on the level of the defect Second thing is rectal and or the bladder incontinence which may be seen. Third is sensory impairment. So in the sensory impairment which is again same as motor. It depends on the level of lesion. Next thing is the hydrocephalus. So the most important thing and we must focus on the hydrocephalus because 80% of the patient of myelomeningocele they are suffering with the hydrocephalus. The reason behind the hydrocephalus in case of myelomeningocele is that there is obstruction in the cerebrospinal fluid flow. So the flow of the cerebrospinal fluid is blocked or obstructed by the protruding sac. So there is hydrocephalus, there is increase in the pressure in the ventricle, that is typically the lateral ventricles and there is impaired absorption of the cerebrospinal fluid also. So what happens is whenever there is obstruction in the flow of cerebrospinal fluid it actually accumulates in the head so because at this age the skull bones they are very mobile and there is presence of the fontanelles and the fontanelles are stretchable so as the amount of cerebrospinal fluid increases those fontanelles will be stretched and they will expand and the size of the head on observation it will be enlarged because of the excess amount of the cerebrospinal fluid which is accumulated. Now what happens is this excess amount of CSF will start compressing the cerebral hemisphere. So sometimes we see the last feature that is the mental retardation as well as sometimes the optic atrophy. So these are the features of the most severe form of the spina bifida cystica. I hope you like the concept of spina bifida. If you have any doubts, do let me know in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe my channel and don't forget to hit that bell icon so that you will receive a notification whenever I post a new video. Keep sharing the videos. Thank you so much for watching the video till end.